Hello, and welcome to another edition of AppSec Decoded. I'm Taylor Armerding, security advocate with the Synopsa Software Integrity Group, and this is the first of two conversations about decoding the OSRA. If you don't know that acronym, you need to get to know it. The Open Source Security and Risk Analysis is an annual report by the Synopsys Cybersecurity Research Center, now in its eighth iteration. And it not only documents trends in open source use, compliance, licensing, and code quality, but it also offers some guidance on how to make sure it's an asset and not a liability. And joining me to talk about that is one of our go-to experts, Mike McGuire, Senior Software Solutions Manager with the Synopsys Software Integrity Group, who has played a major role in the research and analysis that supports the latest OTSRA. Mike, thanks so much for being with us. And let's start it at a high level. What does the OSRA tell us about the popularity of open source? Why is it so popular? And what's good about that? Well, from the, uh, the highest level, what it tells us about the popularity is that it's very popular. <laughs> you got it. You got just, it. Just as po popular as it uh, has been the last few years. Right. Um, you know, we are in the high 90% of the code bases we look at contain some sort of open source, whether it be one component to infinity components. But of course, we really find, uh, rarely find that it's just one component. So obviously, open source software is absolutely ubiquitous with modern application development. It's, it's everywhere, and that's, that's for a good reason. We, we see and talk about the, the digital transformation, mm -hmm. and it's of my opinion that the digital transformation is as success successful and has come about as quickly as it has because of things like open source software, right? right? So these organizations can leverage out-of-house expertise, out-of-house capabilities. They can focus more on innovation and delivering software at the speed that, whether you know it or not, you and I demand as consumers. If there's a bug in one of our applications right. or something, we demand that be fixed right. immediately. Now, if these organizations were focused on having to build a database or an operating system. That wouldn't happen. Right? They're focused more on innovation. So they can leverage that. So it's, um, it's, it's really fantastic. And I think that, that goes to speak um, to why we see it in so many. Well, not uh, to mention that it's free, right? It is, it is free. <laughs> and uh, you know, we, can, we can get into it a little bit more. It's free in the, in the monetary sense, right. not free in the intellectual property exactly. sense. But no, you don't have to pay anything. Right? Right. We, we always encourage that organizations give back to the open source community. Yeah. Especially if you're leveraging it, you support the, the the projects that you that you leverage. Whether you do it with with uh, developer power, um, you let your developers write back into it, or you do monetary donations. Yeah. Right, you donate to organizations that do give to it, or you, you know, put on bug bounty programs where mm -hmm. you pay for bugs yeah. to be discovered and so right. forth. But yes, at the end of the day, it is free. Right. Well, of course. Uh, along with all of those good things are some caveats. And while open source, as the OSRA found, is no more or less secure than proprietary or commercial software, the researchers found that 84% of the code bases analyzed had at least one open source vulnerability and almost half had high risk vulnerabilities. So open source does come with some unique risks as well. I, I think uh, the fact that they don't push updates is one of them. But what are they, and what does this year's OSRA say about those unique risks? Sure. So you're right. Open source is no more or, no, or, or less insecure or secure than closed source or mm -hmm. commercial off-the-shelf software. It's just a different sort of paradigm. Right? It's a different use case. Whereas you know, if I purchase software from you, we probably have some sort of agreement that you are responsible for keeping it up to date and keeping it from... Uh, from being insecure and you come and ship me new software or you push out patches as you alluded to whereas if I'm leveraging open source software now the onus is on me to keep an eye on that the onus is on me not maybe not necessarily to actually go and find these issues and fix them right there is an open source community mm -hmm. that will do that um, there's also anybody leveraging it can do that as well so but that's not the onus is not on me to do that, but to keep my eye on all the open source components that I'm using mm -hmm. and the different types of vulnerabilities and quality risks and license risks that are involved with using them, it's my responsibility to stay on top of that. And if there is a patch issued, it's my responsibility to go and find that patch and, and, and uh, take it and put it into place, right? right. Actually patch that, 
that insecure component. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's some of the, the unique risks. Now, what the Osprey is saying about it, right, there's over 80% had open source vulnerabilities within the, within the component, or within the code base, I should say. Now, that's going to happen. Like vulnerabilities, bugs, that's just a part of doing business in the software industry. There's always going to be vulnerabilities. Getting to a state of zero vulnerabilities is just pie in the sky, in my opinion. Um, you did allude to the high, the high risk vulnerabilities. That's probably a better st statistic to look at because I'll always say not all vulnerabilities are created equally. Like I said, you can't always get to zero vulnerabilities, so you have to really pay attention to which ones are impacting you the most. But the, the number of high severity vulnerabilities, definitely concerning. It's just going to show that organizations either aren't tracking the open source that they're using or they just don't really understand the difference in, in how the onus is on them to track down these, these vulnerabilities and patch them. Exactly. And uh, we're going to be talking about that in much more detail in our next conversation, but we'll leave it there for now. Thanks so much, Mike, and thanks to all of you for joining us for AppSec Decoded. In our next conversation, we're going to be talking about specific tools and methods recommended by the OSRA for managing open source software and therefore maintaining its security. And remember, the OSRA report is free. You can find it at synopsis.com. Until then, I'm Taylor Armerding for the Synopsis Software Integrity Group. We help organizations build trust into their software.